Okay, welcome everyone. We've got a live stream planned here in the Serpents Discord, and today we're going to be attempting to import an asset importer or create an asset importer add on. So I've got a blend file that I've uploaded to the Serpents voice chat, and it's, it's just got some, some very basic primitives that have been colored. And uh, if we move them out, we can see all of them. And I want to be able to make an add-on, so I'm going to save this file into Serpens, and then we're going to navigate the path and try to import assets from, from this file. And I haven't done any prep for this other than making these objects, so everybody's welcome to either follow along or troubleshoot with me. Skidsome, you're definitely welcome to give input as we go. Since you're the first one here. All right, so starting out, I just have a blank Blender file open and I'm um, going to make a new add on. So I'll click on new. And all I have to do is click on Serpens. And let's give our add on a name real quick. We'll call this one the uh, name graph. Okay, so probably ought to do some sort of UI uh, panel or what do you think we should do? Should we do a panel or should we do a pie menu? We'll do it on a, we'll do a panel first then with a menu. So on our interface, let's do a panel. And we'll put it in the 3D viewport. That sounds good to me. And we'll just give it the short name AI for asset importer. Now we need, I know that we're going to need a node to reference our file. And that's going to be in the assets section on our end panel. So let's add in an asset. And this is going to be, we're going to start with just a file. Let's do it simple today. So I'm going to grab my asset importer file. And I should be able to reference this node now. And then we need to, let's see what else. We need to probably make use of the import operator. Or append. We're going to be appending. So right click and get serpents operator. And for right now, we're going to do it in our run operator. We definitely want this file path. We'll make a custom operator to call this. Go under program, add in an operator. And we'll call this. We'll give this a button. So. On our main graph, let's grab our import assets operator. And 
now we've got a button. So if I were to click this, navigating to my file, and I want to find the objects or, yeah, inside objects. Yeah, cone, cube, cylinder, render plane, Suzanne, and Taurus. I'm just going to go ahead and import one and see what shows up. Um, do we get anything in our... Definitely comes in here. We probably need to filter to file type. Hey, what's going on, Noah's Art? Welcome to the stream. I'd like it to scan this file, and then once it's scanned the file, we just show the object names here. And how do we how do we get access to that? Let's see. collection list. Let's let's search for file related stuff. And from file. Leave this here. Let's let's play around a little bit with this asset. A for loop on the interface, maybe? For a list? Put that in here, and let's just give a label. Okay, location unknown, directory name is invalid. That's not going to work. Okay. It looks like when I do this, I can access objects and it adds to my path. Let's just append this object here to that path and see if that helps. Uh, 
Let's see if we click this button now. Okay, we're inside of object. That's good. we access off of this path can we access the individual items what else what else do we have for path path info So I think if I had more than one file, I could probably save each of the primitives out, um, and then I could list each one. Or we can manually just do each object with its path. Um, I can save multiple files and then have it show each file in the directory. Um, so we're just referencing a directory instead. have it list out the files or we just name the files manually what do you guys think so i can push this button and i could just name out cone so if i did object and then cone that out of the way for now clear out this collection delete our cube too just to just to clear out the canvas Turn off use invoke, and I should be able to get that cone. Oh, not a library. Okay, so we have the file path. Invoke file, file execute. Okay, so screens file name. Go to the active area. Let's just see what this shows while we're doing that. Keep this off for now. Shove this aside. Shove this aside. Probably generating errors. We'll do an if property exists node. If else interface.
it's not going to show there. We have to show it inside of here, I think. Um, Blender file view. Let's do an add to menu. Can I not add it here? About an add to panel. We can add here. Still throwing errors for us. Oh, there we go. We probably can just use this for our path. Get rid of the operator. Important object. Oh, we, we don't even need to bring that in because it's part of the path. Just name in cone. See if this works. Oh, that's going to be the one. Okay, so we don't need the we don't need the operator. And we don't need this UI anymore. So we know what's in the file. Do we have an options to get? I don't think we we can show this. We already tried that. Okay, so import cone will work. And now that we've got this, we can actually learn a little bit about it. Let's open this up wide. Bring this one over, bring this one over. A control space to go to full screen. And I like to do this for um, my own learning while I'm building add-ons. In the settings section, you can click on debug nodes or debug sockets. It'll tell you what it's trying to use. So it's using the append, and we're pulling out a directory, and then it's adding, um, just like I did. And it's saying the file name is cone. So I could have used that operator, I bet. You can click on debug nodes, and it shows all the code that this operator is calling. Which is pretty much the same thing. So if those are the files, let's, let's try both ways. We'll go back to the file and append. 
Because that's what the that's what the socket's saying, right? Ops are pinned. I have a run operator. Should be the same thing, ops are pinned. Turn off my debug sockets. Do a file path and then just a string. File name. We need to uh, join path. Do our base path with objects. Turn off use invoke. So use invoke. Um, calls the UI part of the operator or calls stuff that happens before uh, before we run. So that's when you get the pop-up. So we don't have to ask for that. Then I want to import. Let's try cube. Cube is not a library. Let's take a look at the difference between these two. Do I have, have a cube in here? Yeah, I got a cube. Let's try. Um, I shouldn't need to do the backslash. Yeah, that's not that's not needed. Take a look at our error. Intra error model gizmo map handler. Uh, uncompile and recompile. Hmm. Well, I'm not crashing, so let's just keep going forward. How many equals cone? Well, let's try cone. And come about a library. Strange. Seems like it's the same code. Oh well, we'll go with Joshua's node. That works best. Okay, so now we've got one button. We can do another. Let's turn off debug nodes.
what we can do, rather than making a bunch of operators, um, we can just bring in a string parameter. So a new new property, and we'll just call this the uh, the item. So the asset that we're trying to import. Just double click on that and go to asset. And we'll just leave it as a string. It should be able to come in okay. Now, rather than using this, we'll actually put this up with the button. Let's duplicate that up here. In order to get access to the operator property, you go to the um, add menu with shift A, and it's going to be under properties, Serpent's property. Just drag this out, and this is a node property because the operator is a node. Give ourselves a tooltip real quick. On our main graph, we've got port assets. We have our asset. Plug that into path. And let's try seeing if it runs. I've got it coming in through my property when I push the button, and it works. Now all I have to do I can just, um, we want to bring in the cone as well for the name. So, oh, you know what? Let's, let's change this. We want the asset to be coming into the name. And this will always be the same path. There we go. So now I can just call out what I want here on the node. I wanted to do a cube. See if the cube works. Yeah, there we go. All I have to do now is duplicate this operator. Give it the new name. You can probably, to save time on typing, do a string and another string, and then do a combined string node. So we'll say cube here. Bring that for the asset, and then combine string for the label. Just have import. I don't have to copy these, excuse me, I don't have to copy these every time. I can, um, I can simplify this into portals if I want, or I can copy with a button. It, I mean, it's up, it's up to however you want to build your add-on. I like using portals. It makes things a little bit cleaner. So a, a portal is in the tools. It allows you to take data. I'll just copy both of these. your data in and then you can duplicate it click on out and then you can hide this and minimize it that now becomes your label and you can do a portal for just the, the string here as well and it will always be referencing the same string at the beginning but um, for this case we need unique names so I guess the portal is probably not going to be the best option because I gotta change this for each one. We'll delete that. We just need to rinse and repeat.
can probably build this into an interface function though. Import these two items. Let's try that. Shift A interface function. We're going to use import for our label always, so I'm not going to change that. But we do want this string. Uh, I want it on the input, sorry. I want it going here too. Now, rather than calling a button, I'll call this run interface. Let's see, I want this same tag to go here. Get rid of this one. Import cone, cube. We can make these hug together if we want. Um, do an icon too while we're at it. Want this data type to be an icon. Now we got a little bit more of a simplified UI. We can bring in a column node. Click on a line, that way they hug together. Stone cube, Suzanne. We need some space on our string here. So bring this one down the space. Own cube, Suzanne. Cool. What other assets do we have? I only deleted my column node. Bet. Stone cube, cylinder, Suzanne, and Taurus. Misspelled it. Horse icon? Yeah. Awesome. That's one way to do it. We can do it on the panel. We can also move this into a pie menu. So we already have our functions now. Might even be able to, let's see.
the way pie menus work is it goes, I believe it's four than six on the numpad, then two, then eight, and then I think it goes seven, nine, one, and three. We just need to add in a key press node to call the Pi menu, or we can use an operator to call it, but we'll just do a key press node for simplicity's sake. That'll be under events and on key press. And Y is almost always a free key in default Blender in the 3D viewport. So you just change your operator to a Pi menu and go to custom, and we're just going to navigate down to our main graph and then our import simple assets. Now when I push Y, we've got access to all of our stuff. And I don't need to worry about my panel anymore. It's for easy importing, doesn't it? Look at that. Let's say, what if we want to import materials from this file? Oh, we got some text in the no mic. The Noah's Art says, later on to optimize the panel UI, maybe you can make a drop down uh, with an import button. And whichever is selected in the drop down is the object imported via the button. Yeah, I mean, we could do, um, you can do an enum that basically calls. Do you guys want to do that? Should we do a, a little drop down? Um, you can do a sub menu for that. So on the panel, rather than having them all displayed here, we can have them shown in a menu, or you can do an enum. Um, so let, let's go ahead and do that real quick. So rather than pulling it directly on the panel, put it on a menu instead. All the asset importer menu, and we'll just do uh, one column because we don't we don't need we only have five items here. You just need to call in so Shift A interface. We added the menu. Now we just need to access it by using a sub menu node, and we're using custom. We have our main graph, our asset importer, and we just give it the same. We can give it the same label label here, uh, import assets. And now we've got it inside a little menu. Put our UI stuff up, our code. And made a little add-on in Serpents 2 that lets me quickly fix how things are aligned. Um, makes cleanup just a little bit easier. We don't. We haven't used. Uh, we have this interface function, that's right. That's being used to define our buttons. Cool. Got our key press node. Now this is this is a pretty basic add-on. Um, we're not dynamic. We have to manually enter in our items that we're going to be using to append from a file. Now, in a more advanced add-on, um, spend more time making it more dynamic so that you could just load a file into a path and then it could scan for each file in the path. And based on the file name, you could probably have it generate this list. That's a little bit more advanced topic. Maybe we can try that another day if you guys think that's a good idea. But we at least have a decent 
asset importer working and it's working off of one file. And all we have to do is name our objects in the file and then just call the object on your interface right here on the asset. And when it goes into the button, it goes through the asset property when it gets called. And then we run the append from file operator based on that asset path from the asset that we saved. And we, we don't have to do just objects. Um, we could do materials as well. So if I wanted to append a material instead, um, we could try doing something like that. So duplicate most of this structure here. This one would be a little bit more work for importing materials because you'd have to apply them as well. But if I had like an object here, I could import the material and then apply it to the active object. We can try that. We'll, we'll do that and then we'll call I think we'll call this done for the stream. What do you guys think? Does that sound good? Do we have any, do we have any questions right now? Do you guys have any questions? All right, let's keep going then. We'll import a simple material. Now I haven't, um, I probably ought to go back to my original file. And just name my, my materials real quick. Go to, I want shading. Call this one orange. Call material six white. This one purple. Green pink. Black and oh man, I'm picking a color that's not one of the basics. Oh, what the heck is this thing called? Turquoise. <laughs> How about light blue? Good enough. So I just need to save my file now. We should be able to access those materials uh, based on our material slots. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So instead of import assets, I need import materials operator. And I've got this, I'm gonna label this material. Bring in our material here. And once we've imported and appended the material from the file, we want to access our active object. Um, let's try importing the materials though. So let's say I don't have any materials at all. Shading and lots of materials. Go to my Blender. I think I can do this in the file browser. We'll just set them all to delete. Okay, so I have an object and it has material slots, but I don't have any materials. Let's just try appending a material and see if it works. We need to make a similar button here. So let's go up to our interface function. And does Shift Y do anything? Okay, so Shift Y is a good one for a pie menu. We'll do another on key press node. Shift Y, port materials. Uh, let's see. 
don't want operators, though. We want pi menus. We'll need to do a pi menu. We can just do these side by side. Define our function first. So we need the function setting up a button. We'll call this one. Oh no, I crashed. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can recover that crash. Not this file, this is my asset file. Um, we can check. We'll see if the auto save saved. Yeah, I, I mean, I turn it off for some things. I work in some live collaborations, and so it doesn't always uh, work when I'm I'm saving somebody else's file automatically. So I turn it off by default. Um, I did have autosave turned on though. Let's see if I let's see if it recovered my file. Can I recover my last autosave? This is the quit Dublin showing. Up at that one. Oh, recent. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I had it turned on. That's good. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. So when we start these live streams, I'll try to turn that on. <laughs> okay. So we do have the operator. Um, import materials. You need to... Let's, let's try changing that function. Import. Okay. It worked this time. And then we're going to duplicate. I think we can duplicate pretty much all of these. Hit DX. And rather than doing the import asset button, we need to do a separate button um, here. Call this one material. Just change the button to import materials. And then all we have to do is um, bring in this string here back into here. So when you change your button, it'll unlink sometimes. Um, but we're pretty much, we've got a nice use case because we built an interface function already. So we have a lot of the material that we need. Now all we have to do is um, call this run interface on the import material. We'll just we'll start with one material, I guess, for now, and then we'll populate the rest. Just for ease of testing, let's delete delete those. Now we need to add in our submenu. Call this one material importer. And we need another on key press node. That's what I lost in my last word. Shift Y, we want a pie menu, and oh, want a 
custom pie menu. So we have, let's see, a green material. Need to add the sub menu here. Material button. And I want import material. I want to say, oh, okay. We can just duplicate this guy. Okay, before I try running code, and we imported material. So let's see, did the material actually come in? Come my object. We got green. Sweet. It would be nice to be able to just apply it to the the currently selected indexes slot. Um, so what we can do, um, let's let's uh let's clear green. So it's got no users, and I'm just going to do a purge real quick. Um, purge in the orphan browser. But now I don't have that material anymore. And if I import that green, you're right, it deselects the object. But what we can do is we can maintain a reference to that object first, and then just reselect it when we're done. How's that sound? So I think what the way we can do that, because I think, well, let's go back to our view uh, layer. The cube is still technically selected. Um, we just need to reselect it because it's still technically the active object. Um, and I can, I can test that on my panel by just putting a label on here. And we'll go to the blend data objects. Still have cube active, so all we would need to do is just run uh, reselect, just to maintain the selection on that object. We don't even need to store it because it's still active, at least in this case. So there's a run function for objects. Um, I like doing it in data. Um, context is great when when I'm coding add-ons, but when I'm teaching how to code add-ons. When I open the Blend Data Browser, I really like showing people how to navigate through the data section. So I click on data, that way you don't need to worry about what context I'm in, whether I'm in the outliner or the node editor or the 3D viewport. In data, it just has everything that's in the blend file. So I can do my filter and just go to objects. And inside of objects, there's a function. It doesn't matter which object I do because all of these should have um, function. Actually, this is part of, uh, I think this is part of view layer not objects. We don't have access to view layer data. I think that's only in context. So normally when I need to access something on, a, on an object, I'll go into data. But view layer only lives in context, I believe. I don't think that lives outside of, yeah. U layer has a function though that lets you select objects. So I can click on this little filter here and I could just show functions. Um, might need to be in objects first though. Let's bring this out. U layer objects. And let's see function here. Uh, I 
active object. Let's try that one. There we are, select set. So view layer, objects, active object, and then select set. I think this may even be in objects. Let's see. So I can up, open up any object, navigate to the functions, and I can also search the word select. I just click on that copy button, you can paste in here. Um, we're using the active view layer. You don't necessarily need, need to turn that on or off. Uh, select my node. I want the state to be on. This doesn't necessarily, isn't needed. And I can change this from the text of my object because I copied it from just one of my objects, the area light. Um, I, I could copy it from any one of these. It's going to default to text, but I can just change this to property, and then it, it'll default to using the active object. I like using it this way rather than going into context on my active object, because if I were to pull it from here, I don't have the opportunity to, def like if I want to use this node again in my graph somewhere, and I don't want it being used on the active object, this node doesn't have access to that being pulled from context. That's why I like being pulled from, from data whenever possible, because I can throw these into for loops um, in more advanced node graphs. Does that make sense? We don't really need this anymore, so we can just select and set our active object. I believe now that we append a material, just do it again. Yeah, we still maintain the green selection on our object. And then we want to append the material. So let's open up our objects here on the Blend Data Browser. We've got material slots. guy's got two different material slots. I just want to apply it. Let's just apply to um, our active object. I'll just apply this to the first material. Okay, and we're gonna index. Let's see where is index at? Next collection property. Blue, that's what we want. I want to use index zero. It could be this guy. I want to set the material. Hold on one second. And we're going to have to probably run a separate operator here um, for our material because we want to access that material. Bring this Blend Data Browser down.
we need to set um, I want to set this property to this material, right? I think this just needs to be a string. Try it manually first. Save our file and okay. Check to the material type. Okay, so we can get um we can get the material. Go under inputs, uh, blend data, we have materials. And I can index my material by name. Changes to property. Here. Now let's try. Yeah, that'll work. Now what we can do, because we're we're importing like dozens of green materials, if we already have a green material, um, let's not make more. Let's just do let's just do the one. If it already exists, then we'll skip the operator importing part and then just set the material on the object. Um, we also want to move our material property, so the name of this, rather than setting it to green, I can make this more dynamic by using the property on the operator. Now whenever I select something, it should still call that, yeah. So it's pulling in green because green is the only button that I have available. But now we can choose pink. Should be able to do purple. Now all we have to do is handle whether or not the material exists. So we can literally copy these two. Put them in front. Shift everybody over. Add an if-else node. I want to say we need to do property exists first. Um, Shift A and under properties, there's a property exists node. And if it does exist, we don't want to append from our file because we already have it. So we'll bypass that. If it doesn't exist, we'll execute. Um, we want to have this section here. The select set's built in with the operator because we want to reselect the object. So we'll leave that one, um, but we want this one to be done either way. like that and then I'll just cut this I have no wrangler a little bit easier to see on the UI 
that's shift and just right click and drag. Oh, I need to turn on my screencast piece. Uh, here we go. Screencast keys maybe are the reason why I crashed last time because um, it's using modals while I'm working. Or it could have been Serpents, I don't know. I did the same thing and it didn't crash, so. Oh, yeah, good call. Let's save. Thank you. I'm set to save every three minutes, so that should be. Sh should be, uh. I shouldn't lose too much work. I only lost the key map last time, so that's good. So then on my pie menu, um, I haven't brought blue in yet, so let's do light blue. I can just copy these, bring them up. So I should be able to call my, that's a, oh, that's kind of cool. I think I like that. Am I calling a pie menu or a menu? Oh, I'm calling a menu. Okay. Uh, let's do pie menu. Real asset, simple pie. Oh, I need to call one. <laughs> Try that again. Okay, so where's my active object? This guy? Well, we should only have one light blue material. Let's try, let's try pulling it in on this one. And we only have one data group now. So I can go and clear all my materials. Click and delete. Oh no. <laughs> I've got my... <laughs> Got my assets blink from the crash, I think, maybe. Bring these in. So we have cone, cube, Suzanne, chorus, and cylinder. Okay, there we go. And those are there. Save, shift Y, import green. Shift Y, import green. Cool. We got four green users. Great. There we go. So we got we have an asset importer. So I could import an asset if I wanted. Import a cube. And then I could you know, change its scope. Uh ooh, you know what? Import doesn't activate. Does it not activate that object? We can just do a select. Suzanne. Suzanne active? Is not. He is selected. 
We want to fix that. I don't know if that's necessarily a bug. It's just part of asset importing. Do we want the object to become active? I think we do. Since we're only importing one object. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you cut out. What were you saying? Why you? I think we can get, I, yeah, we can select get the object. We'll see how that goes. We'll just go to our data tab on cube. We can search for the functions again and select. Yes, we actually have an objects node that has selected objects. For loop on selected objects. Basically, we can see if the object is active. Um, here what's available for objects For each selected object, if it's not active, I want to make it active. Um, leave here. Oh. I think my screencast keys is it's having issues. Okay, cool. We're right where we left off. Blend data browser. Copy context from the 3D viewport. The view layer. Uh. We can set this property. Let's back out. I don't think we need the browser anymore for a little bit. So we need to check to see if the object is selected.
We don't really need the execution on this. We're just checking. If it is if it is selected. We're going to set the object to be active. Something like that. Save again. Let's see if that works. Why or Suzanne? Okay, now she's active. Why import cube? Okay, now that's active. We'll just check to see if we'll pull it right before this just to verify it wasn't working before. Why import cone? Yeah, it's not active, it's just selected. And we can apply material right after we import it. Look at that. Do we have console errors? No errors. That's not a terrible add-on. Nice little basic. We can make it better, obviously, but for a live stream, I think we did a, did a pretty good job. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, I've been doing Serpents for a while, so I'm also one of the beta testers, so I get to test features, and I get I get one-on-one -on -one guidance for really dumb questions with Joshua because I beta test, so I, I, I can't say I'm a pro, but I definitely have a little bit of, a little bit of help. It's such a cool add-on. So now um, I would say to finish this off, let's just verify that this works outside of Serpents. So I'm using a beta version of Serpents, um, but it should be everything I've used here, I think, is part of what you guys have in Serpents 3. So have you guys been following along, being able to do this yourselves, or are you just watching? Okay, well, what we'll do, um, let me delete this object and purge my orphans. Uh, I use power save and it's got a nice little orphan purger. Deletes all my data blocks. Let me try saving this file. Um, let's see if you guys can at least have access to this. And if it lets you export. Because I do want to see people following along on this process. Um, let's go to the no mic section. Yeah, let's see if it loads. Oh, sweet. It's even... You're going to have to probably make your asset um, on the end panel. Reference the, the asset file that I have above in the chat. Because you won't be able to access my E drive on my little spare hard drive. So you'll have to reference your own asset file. But you can, you, you can just re recheck where the file is by clicking on the folder icon here. And just go navigate to the uh, asset imp imports. And you shouldn't have to change anything in the code. And then I just go to my add on and then I'm going to save the add on. Let's verify that the asset exports with the add on. So I can copy and paste on my zip file that I exported. And I can actually just unzip this temporarily because I just want to inspect it. 
There should be an assets folder. There it is. There's my blend file. Sweet. Okay, so at least export's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save my serpents file. Whenever I export an add-on, I save, and then I just close it. And I just open up a new copy of Blender. Um, I'm going to close the basic asset file too. Oh, um, let me let me give you guys the latest asset file because I renamed all my materials. Um, save. I'm going to upload that too. Uh Oh yeah, yeah. Um let me open up let me open up the other file real quick. Let's open up Blender. So g use this simple asset file I'm uploading to Discord now. Use the new one because it's got the materials. And then um, all you have to do is download that, though. You don't need to open it. And then on the, the live stream file, let me open the live stream file real quick. File, open recent. You don't need to do anything in the graph itself. You just need to go to the Serpent Zen panel, and there's an assets section. And you should, there should already be an asset loaded here, but it has a path below. And you just, yep, you just need to change that path. And it, sh it should, as long as you're using the exact same file, um, because it's got my materials, um, it, should, it should be able to compile. Yeah, this, I mean, that's the point of these live streams, trying to teach people as we're going live but then we have time for questions. So we've, I mean, in a very basic sense, um, Joshua and Finn have built an add-on that lets me make my own Blender data browser, right? And I don't have to worry about it being appended. I mean, I can choose if I want to link a file by just making this link checkbox work. I mean, this is really cool. So the next step is we do want to test to make sure I can install this add-on and use it outside of dev mode. So make sure you guys can export. That's what I do want to check. Um, I'd like to check these in the live stream because I'm going to post this with my YouTube video. I'll give the community both of these files. That way they can, they can test themselves. So if, if it, you guys can try doing an export on the Serpent Zen panel, just save the add-on. And you can save it with your name if you want. I'm not selling this. And let me know if it saves for you. Now, when you do save the add-on, you have to close Blender, in my opinion. Um, Start with a fresh session anytime you install add-ons. Yeah, I, I completely close Blender down because um, Blender like holds on to its script data. And when you have multiple sessions of Blender, I don't really know what's holding on to what. So I just close everything down. Yeah, anytime I delete an add-on, I'll close Blender. Um, anytime I do anything with add-ons other than installing them, I close Blender. That may be superstition, but I never have problems when I do it that way. Yeah. Oh, it's working for me. Sweet. <laughs> mm. 
and let's try to make a material. Oh, this is awesome. I'm so glad I did this today. Oh, wait, you know what? Light blue. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's looking good. So what's nice about this is, um, especially for the materials, the assets is good too. Uh, this is all just like basic example, but if you have a library of models that you've just been dying to put into a browser uh, for easy imports, you can now um, build your browser. It, it's, it's still a little bit clunky because like you have to manually come in here. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong file. I have to come in here and um, make a button for every one I want to do on all of my panels. There is there's a more dynamic way, but it requires a lot more a lot more work. Hey, what's going on, MoFX? Oh. Y yeah. Agreed. And I, I haven't actually played with assets a ton. Um, I wanted to do that today. I've done it a little bit. Um, I, there's definitely a way to make this dynamic. And there, there's a couple ways to do it. If Joshua were in the stream today, he'd probably blow all of our minds and say, yeah, it's actually not that hard. You just got to use this and this. Um, I just hit a road. I hit a roadblock. <laughs> so I was like, well, <laughs> I'm just going to do them one at a time. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Now, um, you can set your asset to become a library. So if I did this instead of a file, I could do a directory. And a lot of add-ons that I know of, they use a directory to scan for files. Um, Extreme PBR is a really good one. I can sh showcase that. Uh, so Extreme PBR makes you, makes you load their library. And their library is just full, shocked full of files within files within files. And so the, my understanding is if you were to do that in Serpens, you would just, you would use a library instead of a file itself. Um, and then once you have the directory, I think, I think that pent method would have worked where I did, um, it's on path, list directory files. And as I had a list, I could I could probably put that into a dynamic enum. And maybe Yep. I I think that's probably the way to go. I really like to explore this maybe in the next live stream. Um with a little bit of homework and dumb questions to Joshua. <laughs> we we're gonna be posting this to YouTube, so um he, like he can reference the video saying, okay, yeah, it looks like you got stuck here and I can ask him questions between now and the next stream. But yeah, the, the ultimate goal is like, we've done a basic asset importer. I didn't want to get too advanced, uh, especially for new users who are just like, I just bought this add-on and I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, teaching somebody to do something dynamic is a very advanced skill in my opinion. Always try to do it manually first and then work your way towards the dynamic, unless you already know how to code um, or there's a tool that's already built to do it. But I imagine that list directory files is going to be the one that we use. And then you would make a enum property. And you set it to dynamic items. And I want to say you add the node. Set property. Oh, man. It's been a while since I've done dynamic enums. There we go. Generate items. You just fill it with that instead. Uh, we can try that if we have... I've got... I've got about 10 minutes before I have to cut. So we can try doing this if we want on a new file. Uh, just to see how it works. You guys are interested. Okay, let's, we'll just, we'll start a whole new file. 
Um, because we ha we know this one works. So let's just uh, I'm gonna close Blender down. Are there any other questions though before we we call this one quits? You you. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I could. This append from file node is it's calling the append operator. Joshua has it formatted better than I can figure out, and um, it's got co collections in here. So you can import an entire scene collection, and it imports every object in that collection. You can import worlds, textures. You can import entire scenes if you want. So not just collections, but all the collections in a scene. Yeah, I think there's a way to do collections, but it's uh, I think it's a dev feature you have to turn on, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's yeah, Blender three. They're they're supposedly advertising that the asset browser is going to get better. <laughs> the only thing that this is missing currently is we don't have um, images with what we're doing, but there is an image gallery node, and it works. It works with dynamic enums. Um, we'll probably need to do an entire dedicated stream just to navigating this together because I'm pretty new with this whole dynamic enums thing. It, it's super powerful, um, but I don't claim to be a master at using it. So let's, let's um, I guess we can get started. Unless you have more questions, we, we can just take time for a few more questions. Okay, cool. MobiFX, how you doing, man? Why are you, are you guys doing good? Take silence as a yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, so what we'll do, we're just going to do the same thing. Um, close Blender down. I'm going to open up this simple asset importer file that has all my simple assets, and I'm just going to save each asset as a separate separate file. So save a copy. Let's do save as, and we'll just do cube. And what, let's make me a directory while I'm here. I'll, I'll zip this if you guys want me to zip it. If we if we have su a very quick success, <laughs> so get the cube, and on the cube file, I'm just going to. see delete everything out of here that I don't need do the same thing let me prep the scene for the entire key We'll just do two. We'll do two objects. If we can do two, we know we can do more than two. We'll do Cube and Suzanne. All right. Start a new session of Blender. Now we're gonna we're gonna watch me work under pressure. We got five minutes. New add-on. Let's go add a panel. And we want on the path node, we want list directory files. We want a property that's probably going to be a dynamic enum. And I need to add in an asset. Our 
out in here as our path. And I think I can just add in a property node with a display property node. And well, it definitely recognizes the two files. So, what happens when I add more? Uh, hey, it's updating. Okay. So there's our dynamic list at least. We know that things are coming in the list. Now a display gallery node I th or icon gallery node I think it is. Um, we'd pull in the enum. We got all these items. Show labels. This is where we would start adding our pictures in. How we do that, I forget. <laughs> but we do have a dynamic list. Um, and as you select an item, so uh, we have an on property update node. And from file. We'd somehow need to get access to the name inside the file. Um, and I don't know how to do that just yet, but we would we would include the path here. Which may just be this. It might be path parts. Let's see. Path info. Case name, maybe? Probably going to crash. S object is okay. I don't want the base, I want the extension. Oh, we'll just print. Let's verify that when you select the object, you can print. Okay, so we at least have the beginnings of that dynamic effect. We just need to figure out how to get access to the file name on that node. So that's a good basic start. Um, We'll have to play with that just a little bit more in the next live stream. Yeah, and if you... <laughs> if, if you figure out more on this line, <laughs> please share, because that will help in the next live stream. Yeah, I'm glad you guys were able to join. Blue Jeans, this is recorded, so if you're late, um, we made an asset importer, and um, we'll just we'll share what we did complete today. So I can import basic assets um, from a list of list of objects in a file, and we can also change the materials on those assets that are also imported from the same file. Yeah, it, it was, <laughs> I had a busy week, so it was a last minute event, <laughs> but we'll try again next Saturday. I'll try to make an event. It just depends on whether I have to work or not. So we'll, um, this is all recorded though. So I'll, I'll post this to YouTube once it's uh, posted and it's, it's posted at my screen resolution, not the discord, uh, 720 resolution. So it should be even better quality. 
and uh, it's it's fairly long. We we started at ten, and it's now almost twelve, so it's about two hours. And it's not this is not like the Blender Asset Browser where it's amazing, um, but it is it is an awesome asset importer for simple assets, and you can totally um, you can totally build up a manual asset list with what we did today. So, and it's it's dynamic enough that it won't. Um, yeah, it's dynamic enough it won't repeat your materials. So if I wanted to bring in a material for my asset, it's not going to, I can do all these green, and I'm not making three green materials, it's all using the same one. Oh, cool. Yeah, if you go to the Blend Data Browser, um, Serpens can access anything that's in Blender. Oh, you're talking about for creating new node editors. Yeah, I... Um, I am not the person to ask that question to because I've never done that. But if it can run, Serpents can totally run a script. So if, if you've got scripts that you're doing that's importing node editor stuff, you can totally do that. Or if you get more advanced, you can actually code your own nodes in Serpents. Um, so you could code something that generates a node editor. Yeah, we we did a we did an entire add on in this live stream. We went from not doing anything with no prep. Um, all I did was make an asset file, and then we figured out how to do the import of all the assets in that file that I cared about, and then we exported it and we also installed it. And I had Noah's Art in here. Um, he confirmed that the add on could export and install. And the examples of both of those blend files are here in the No Mic channel. So the S3 live stream and the simple assets, you just have to, you have to update your asset path to that file because you won't be able to see my E drive when you load the Serpents file. We'll, we'll, we'll do more of these live streams. Yeah, this is, this is the point of, of Serpents is to help people make things to, I mean, I don't think it's meant to help people make amazing, super huge add-ons, but it's definitely helped help us make things that make our workflows better. So. Yeah, I. So I've done, in Serpents 2, I've made an add-on that was 60 plus graphs long. Um, and I think I had 80 properties and uh, 20 plus variables. Yeah, so that's a great question, actually. We'll end on this, and then we'll call it quits for the day. So on my Serpens assets, um, like I'm, I'm running in a blend file currently on my node editor, and everything's in nodes. But it's, it's generating um, live code as I'm working. So my Serpents code log is, is building the, the actual Python for everything I want. And in a new release of Serpents, I don't know if it's on the current release, but in a new one that's coming, you'll have a settings here where you can uh, format your code. And this, this takes, it takes a, a performance impact, but it, it makes it PEP8 compliant. 
And so it generates all the PEP8 Python to make this add-on work. And when you export it, it's really just, um, my, I think it's in init.py, init yeah. So if I open this init.py in Visual Studio, it's literally just the Python. There are no more nodes. Everything is Python code. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, when you export an add-on, it's very similar. Um, the the way they did it with Serpens 2, they had a whole bunch of bloatware, um, like helper classes and things that they generated with the code. And it like the add-ons got really long really fast, even for simple add-ons. But with Serpens 3, they've completely restructured how they do that. And it's it's only giving you what you need when you export. So the add-on we made today, it is literally only 260 lines of code. Which isn't bad. I mean, for, for an add-on, 260 lines is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. I, I plan on doing more of these. Um, I, I do apologize. I, I tend to make events last minute just because I'm a hobby guy. So whenever I get the free time, I have time to, to dedicate. And I... Yeah. Yeah, because it's a hobby, it, it takes the, the back burner. Um, only when I have free time can I make an event. And I, I'd hate to make an event and say, oh, sorry, guys, I can't do it today. But that's why we record it for YouTube, because then anybody can watch, right? <laughs> cool. Well, I really appreciate you guys coming, and uh, I'm going to stop recording now, but we'll catch you on the next one. Um, I can hang around just for a few more minutes, and then i got to head out. But for everybody watching on YouTube, we'll see you guys in the next live stream.